and I just do not have the insurance to cover my own butt to handle any of the emotional turmoil you may endure. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Earthling Weight Loss. Thank you so much for tuning in again today. So today's topic is on omega-3 fatty acids. If you've seen my other videos or know of my content, you know that I recommend a very low-fat plant-based diet. And something that comes up in health news a lot lately is whether you're getting enough healthy fats to do anything from getting glossier hair to better skin to actually preventing serious conditions like heart disease. Today's discussion will cover some factual knowledge on omega-3 fatty acids, as well as explain the origin of our current recommendations. You may be surprised at how far society has been misled to think that we need supplemented fat sources. Please refrain from getting too upset after hearing the truth. I will be exposing a lot more myths in upcoming videos, and I just do not have the insurance to cover my own butt to handle any of the emotional turmoil you may endure. So the human body is capable of synthesizing most of the fatty acids it needs from glucose and other molecules containing carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Humans, however, are not able to synthesize the double bonds that exist in omega-3 and omega-6 positions. Therefore, the fatty acids linoleic acid, which is from omega-6, and then alpha-linolenic acid from omega-3s are necessary in the human diet. These are called essential fatty acids. So people following a Western type of diet generally get more than they need for omega-6s. And so our recommendations are based around getting enough omega-3. So EPA and DHA are omega-3 fatty acids synthesized from alpha-linolenic acid. Essential fatty acids are very important for the formation of phospholipids, which gives cell membranes their structure and their functional properties. They are essential for growth, fertility, development, maintaining the structure of red blood cells and cells in the skin and nervous system. If adequate amounts of linoleic acid and alpha-linolenic acid are not consumed, an essential fatty acid deficiency will result. Symptoms include dry, scaly skin, liver abnormalities, poor healing of wounds, growth failure in infants, and impaired vision and hearing. Because the requirements for essential fatty acids are way below the current intake in the United States, Fatty acid deficiencies are very rare. Hormone-like molecules called eicosanoids are derivatives of the omega fatty acids. Eicosanoids regulate blood clotting, blood pressure, immune function, and other body processes. The effect an eicosanoid has on these following functions depends on which acid it comes from. For example, an eicosanoid synthesized from omega-6 increases blood clotting, whereas an eicosanoid made from the omega-3 fatty acid EPA actually decreases blood clotting and reduces inflammation. Since inflammation plays a role in the progression of heart disease, researchers have suggested that a nutrient with anti-inflammatory properties could potentially prevent heart disease. Current recommendations say this about essential fatty acids. The American diet contains plenty of omega-6 fatty acids, so to get a healthier mix, Americans should increase their intake of omega-3s from foods such as fish, walnuts, flaxseed, leafy green vegetables, soybean, and canola oils. All right, so we are being advised to increase our fat intake. This is pretty interesting. And I'm sure some people will be saying, well, yes, but they're healthy fats and our body needs them and so we should be supplying them this. And yes, definitely. But we still only need very small amounts of these healthy fats in our diet. Have you ever wondered why we're being encouraged to buy fish oil supplements? Some of you might be aware of a study that was done on the Greenland Eskimos in the 1970s where they found that they had a low incidence of heart disease despite the fact that most of their diet was composed of fat. So whether you've heard of this or not, please sit back, relax, and listen to a story of science done wrong and a classic example of confirmation bias. In the 1970s, a pair of Danish researchers, Hans Olaf Bang and Jorn Dyerberg, were curious about the nutrition of the Inuit people. So they undertook an expedition to the northwest coast of Greenland and set up their base in a town called Umanak. They surveyed the population of about 1,350 people. Because the climate of the Arctic is so ill-suited towards agriculture and plant matter isn't really available to forage throughout most of the year, the traditional Inuit diet is 
very low in carbohydrates and very high in animal fat and protein compared to the global average. The researchers decided to draw blood from 130 of the natives. What they found is that the Inuits had lower levels of triglycerides and cholesterol in their blood, yet they had a higher proportion of the omega-3 fatty acids, which are more concentrated in oily, cold water marine animals. Chemical analysis of the food samples revealed that, compared to the Danes, the Inuit people ate more protein, more cholesterol, and more omega-3 fatty acids. So given what we know about a highly carnivorous diet that's based around meat and animal products, we would assume this would be a recipe for heart disease. But Bang and Dierberg speculated that the omega-3 fatty acids were actually protecting the Inuit people against heart disease. By 1980, Worldwide, people were suggesting that following a diet similar to the Inuit people would be a preventative measure against heart disease in populations that were prone to it, such as Western societies. These research conclusions transcended into modern medical advice and dietary recommendations, suggesting that everyone's hearts and arteries would benefit if only we ate like the Eskimos. This promoted a health food trend that continues to this day. Okay, now here's the big whammy to this ridiculous health trend. The researchers never actually proved that the Inuit people had low rates of heart disease. They never tested it at all. Bang and Dierberg were not cardiologists. They were nutritionists, and they didn't actually study anyone's heart. Instead, they relied on numbers provided by Greenland's chief medical officer for statistics that were full of holes throughout the 1960s and 1970s. These reports were based on death certificates and hospital admissions, which included only a handful of confirmed heart disease cases in Umanak. This is where the misleading information started. So in the 1970s, 30% of the population lived in settlements with no chief medical officer at all. This meant that many death certificates were filled out by whoever was nearby, without a doctor ever actually seeing the body. Since the population is so scarce and dispersed, someone experiencing heart attack symptoms might not even be close enough to a hospital to even attempt a trip. And even if they did, the hospital might not even have the proper equipment to diagnose the condition. Autopsies were also not regularly performed, so say if a person even did make it to the hospital and died there or died on their way, they often were not able to conclude the cause of death. Given these circumstances, it is very unlikely that every heart attack that occurred would have been accurately recorded. In a recent review paper written in the Canadian Journal of Cardiology, a research team led by Dr. George Fodder and his co-authors gathered all the studies that they could find concerning Inuit cardiovascular health in Canada, Greenland, and the United States. A few of them found low heart disease rates, but the majority of them concluded that cardiovascular risk and heart disease was no less common than in other populations and in some cases, it was even more common. There is also a report published by a Danish researcher back in the 1940s, and so 30 years before Bang and Dierberg's expedition, which described high rates of heart disease among the Greenland Inuits. This is a direct quote from one of these research articles. The totality of reviewed evidence revealed that Inuits have a similar prevalence of heart disease as non-Eskimo populations. They have excessive mortality due to cerebrovascular strokes, and their overall mortality is twice as high as that of a non-Eskimo population. Their life expectancy is approximately 10 years shorter than the Danish population. Mortality from stroke was found to be even higher, and mortality from all cardiovascular diseases combined was found to be similar or even higher among the Inuits. We know that a higher intake of saturated fat is positively associated with elevated blood pressure, insulin resistance, glucose intolerance, and carotid atherosclerosis. Traditional Inuit foods are high in saturated fats and affect the Inuit's cardiovascular health status the same way it does in Western societies. When Bang and Jarberg wrote about what they had seen and done in Greenland, they posted their findings in an honest and direct manner. Yet, their message got twisted as it was cited and recited in generations of research articles. People started to write that they had found definitively that Inuit people had low rates of heart disease, as if this was a fact, but there was just no strong evidence. And today, the American Heart Association recommends people to take fish oil supplements. Nutritional guidelines in the United States, Canada, and Europe all call for fish twice a week. And all of this is based off of a flawed research study. The hypothesis was that the omega-3 fatty acids in the Eskimo diet prevented against heart disease. 
Scientists turned up evidence that these omega-3 fatty acids may lower triglyceride levels in the blood, prevent irregular heart rhythms, and reduce inflammation, all of which could potentially improve heart health. Then there were long-term observational studies like the Nurses' Health Study, which showed links between eating fish and having a healthy heart. But remember, correlation does not equal causation. People who eat fish may consume less substances that are damaging to heart health, or have healthier lifestyles in other ways. In order to truly learn whether omega-3 fatty acids protect heart health or not, we need to do large-scale randomized trials. An ongoing study will follow more than 25,000 people taking either real pills or placebo pills over the course of five years. This study will be completed in 2018, and perhaps then we'll have the right information to make the right connections to actually make the right recommendations to people. But today, the fish oil market is booming as a billion dollar industry. This misinterpretation of the original findings is a classic example of confirmation bias and the unfortunate nature of market hastiness to use flawed information to fuel their business. Returning to what I discussed in the beginning of this video, yes, we do need small amounts of ALA in our diet. So how much is enough? The National Academy of Sciences has suggested a recommended intake for ALA of 1.6 grams for men daily and 1.1 grams for women daily. This applies to people that are from the age of 19 to 70. Good sources include a wide variety of vegetables, such as collard and turnip greens, spinach, kale, green beans, romaine lettuce, summer squash, winter squash, legumes, and even fruit, especially strawberries and raspberries. Meeting these requirements should be no sweat on a low-fat plant-based diet. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this video. Did your opinion of fatty acids change after you watched the video? Do you personally take omega-3 fatty acid supplements or are conscious of food sources containing them? What do you think you'll do now that you know that the hype around omega-3 fatty acids is quack? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and share this video with your friends, coworkers, and family. It is hugely important to me to get accurate information out to the people that are trying to make good decisions for the sake of their health. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I do videos like this on science topics as well as some pop culture ones and some random stuff too. Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. I really appreciate it. Have an abundant day, Earthlings, and see you next video. Bye.